You may call it slot war or frequency brawl. The issue remains that the diplomatic row emanating from suspension of flights from Nigeria to UAE and vice versa has finally ended in a smooth landing as both countries have agreed to reinstate flight services and slots on both ends of the popular route. While the UAE granted Nigerian flag carrier Airpiece seven slots weekly to Dubai, the federal government reinstated the 21 weekly winter schedule earlier granted to Emirates. One may be right to say the COVID-19 pandemic and the resultant travel protocols only helped to further expose the dogfight that had hitherto existed over COVID-19 travel protocols, which saw the UAE aviation authorities announcing travel suspension and the lifting at will and unilaterally restricting flights for airpiece, the Nigerian carrier, from the earlier agreed three slots in winter to one. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Agency, of course, in what may be termed reciprocity response, also reduced Emirates flights to one Abuja slot from the initial 21 Lagos Abuja slots. Now that the issues seem over, with the reinstatements and resumption of scheduled passenger flights under the bilateral air services agreement between the two countries, we want to x-ray the issues and concerns that ensued. This is Nigeria Today. I am Lydia Ochi. Thank you for joining us. Joining me to discuss the issues are Captain Musa Nuhu, Director General, Nigeria Civil Aviation Agency, NCAA, joining us via Zoom. Thank you for joining us. And we also have Bello Ahmed Alkali, Managing Director, Northeast Regional Shuttle. Thank you for joining us on the program. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay, let me begin. I would have loved to start with the Captain Musa, but uh, since we're having uh, audio challenges, so let me begin with you. I uh, actually want to talk about these uh, diplomatic issues. There's no doubt they were diplomatic issues. Will you consider Nigeria's reciprocity the best way to handle the issue? Um, yes, in the sense that um, when you talk about bilateral air agreement, an agreement has been signed between UAE and Nigeria a long time ago. Uh, there are slots given to Emirates to come in, mm -hmm. irrespective of the fact that we may not have had one before, but when you have an airline that says, okay, we are ready, we have the capacity to go, they also get air piece, uh, some slots to go in. And uh, uh, sometimes, most of the times I will say, it's all about the economics. Okay. Uh, economics in the sense that they have plenty of machines. In Africa, uh, you have the best market in Nigeria. So they try as much as possible to see how they could all capture the market and uh, leave in Nigeria behind. So what the government did in fighting for the fact that air peace must be given a slot into Dubai airport and must be given all the number of slots that were agreed uh, is really something that uh, the government should be commended because, I mean, we cannot just sit down and see Emirates coming in and we cannot have our own going into Dubai. Okay, now uh, let us let me let me go on to talking you uh, talking to you about the parties involved, all parties that are, are, are to ensure a strict compliance to COVID nineteen travel protocols of both countries. Now, what measures are being put in place to ensure that these measures are actually put in place? Uh, the COVID nineteen protocol is not a Nigerian government issue; it's an issue of uh, the World Health Organization, Nigerian government is part of that uh, arrangement and Nigerian government is a government that is fully uh, committed to making sure that uh, it meets of the demand of the COVID-19 uh, protocols. Okay. Um, we didn't break any, okay. but like I said, it's, towards, it's all about an economic uh, uh, situation. Uh, I could give you an example okay. during the time of General Abacha when we had a problem with British Airways uh, when he said British Airways shouldn't come to Nigeria, all they did was they said, okay, United States 
uh, prevented Nigeria from coming because of one or two things, and they also want to take uh, a clue from that, preventing Nigeria to come in. Uh, that was very uncalled for. So the president uh, or the head of state at that time uh, stood up on his feet to make sure that uh, Nigeria is allowed to fly into London. So, I mean, uh, this is the kind of situation we are facing ourselves today. It's okay. Now, thank, thank goodness we have uh, re-established uh, contact with Captain Musa. So if you can hear me clearly, how would you describe all the brouhaha that ensued between the Nigerian authorities and that of the United Arab Emirates in the past weeks? Yeah, well, the issue uh, Emirates, uh, the protocols uh, imposed uh, on Nigeria, the Nigerian government, uh, government found unacceptable and uh, discriminatory. We've been through uh, this. Uh, well, thank God it's all finally sorted out and uh, flight operations uh, have resumed between the two countries. Emirates resumed uh, operations on the 5th of September and the Nigerian designated island on the Emirates Road the airpiece uh, plans to start uh, on 1st of March uh, this year. So uh, we've been through a lot of pain through uh, disagreements, negotiations, understanding, and uh, it's, 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 uh, it's all over now and hope uh, such issues do not arise uh, in the future. Okay. Uh, bilateral air services agreement has set the terms and conditions of flight operations between two countries and it's usually based on the principle of reciprocity okay. and uh, that's why we stood our grounds when uh, air peace was only granted one out of three slots uh, they requested for flying into Sharjah. Meanwhile, uh, Emirates Airlines had been granted 21 flights, weekly flights, two daily to Lagos and one uh, daily to Abuja. So uh, that's why the government insisted. But uh, when the uh, EU authorities assisted, only one flight for Airbus, so Nigerian government reciprocated, okay, Emirates too will have only one slot to mm -hmm. Nigeria. And uh, well, thank God uh, we've gone through a lot of negotiations, diplomatically, presidential, uh, steering committee, uh, the Foreign Minister of Aviation, and the Ministry of Aviation, and the NCA have been able to reach an uh, amicable solution. The Emirates. Uh, have come up with uh, protocol, COVID-19 protocol guidelines that are universally acceptable to the government of Nigeria. So, uh, uh, lifting the suspension of flight operations between Nigeria and EA. Okay. Now, Captain Musa, I'm still staying with you. Uh, in, in a press release issued by your office, the issues were resolved under the bilateral air services agreement between the two countries. Can you let us uh, more into these agreements? Let's know more about disagreements? Well, I don't have the full details, but I know that certain airports in Nigeria, I think it's Lagos and Abuja, then uh, Kanu and Otakot, I believe. Then uh, UAE, there are about four or five airports, Sharjah, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and uh, one or two other airports uh, that are included in the bilateral air service agreement. And uh, Nigeria designated airpiece as the airline on that route. While the UAE had designated Emirates and Etihad, uh, Etihad used to pre COVID, Etihad was flying uh, daily flight to Lagos. But after the post COVID resumption of flights, Etihad decided not to fly into Nigeria. So uh, those are the basic details. It's quite a big document. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't uh, recall all the specific details, but basically, the countries designate airlines that will operate between the two countries to certain airports uh, between the two countries. Okay. And it deals with a number of frequencies, the type of aircraft, uh, capacity of the aircraft, and so, such and so details. And also, each airline must respect the regulatory requirements of the other countries, such as Emirates coming to Nigeria must respect, comply with Nigerian regulations, and uh, airplanes flying to uh, UAE must also comply with the uh, you government uh, regulations. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me come back to you now. Um, Bello, in your opinion, Mr. Alkali, 
in what ways do you think Niger the Nigerian government can be more true to entrenching COVID-19 travel protocols to prevent any form of embarrassment from countries? Uh, we really have no option but uh, to actually follow the protocol as enshrined uh, in all the arrangements that has been put out by the World Health Organization is for our own good. Um, I am traveling. If I am traveling, I will want to feel that I am safe. I will want to feel the person next to me is safe to travel. So absolutely, uh, following the protocol is not something that we should just say, okay, it's an option. No, it's not an option. It is something that must be followed to the latter. Some of the problems we are facing, like as regards to these bilateral air agreements when it comes to uh, like uh, sharing of the airports that our airline will get to. Uh, if you talk about Heathrow Airport, you talk about JFK, I mean, uh, you are talking of airports that have about 1,500 flights in a day. So if a Nigerian carrier is coming in, most at times their feeling is before what it used to happen. Nigeria Airways, the passengers are rowdy, we don't come on time, we have so much luggage in front of us and whatever. So, but the situation is changing right now. Uh, a lot of technological advancement is at our disposal. You see a lot of people coming into the airport only just to get their boarding passes. We are getting somewhere. Before you have to go to the counter to buy a ticket, now you can buy a ticket online. So we are getting somewhere uh, with time uh, all these things uh, will fizzle away and the Nigerian government with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority like the DG was talking about the regulations, uh, they make sure the, 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 the uh, airlines follow the regulations to the latter simply because of a situation like this. If, I mean, uh, people are following the regulations, I believe we wouldn't have any problem as regards to satisfying the other nations that uh, we fly into. Okay. Now, uh, Captain Musa, when uh, the Nigerian government uh, brought about the issue of this uh, reciprocity, a lot of uh, Nigerians welcomed the idea and they were glad that the government actually, the federal government actually took this stand to also make their own position known. Now, what do you think this will hold or this potential for future restrictions for our country from other, especially from the, the Committee of Nations? Well, I, I thank you very much. I think the, stand, the Nigerian government took uh, sent a clear signal to the, to the world that we cannot just be run over. We have millions of passengers traveling uh, from Nigeria, mostly almost 1995 or more percent are carried by foreign carriers. This is a form of capital flight. The Nigerian carriers deserve to share a proportion of those passengers, those Nigerian passengers, so they can also use that money they make from those funds to further the growth of the Nigerian economy, reduce the capital flight from Nigeria. Uh, I'm sure if your central bank or talks to you, it told hundreds of millions of dollars that go out of Nigeria to foreign airlines every year on ticket sales. And we, we just got to protect our economy. It's all about economy. It's all about uh, initial development. Mm -hmm. And if we don't protect uh, airlines, no matter how small they are compared to the Emirates, BS and others, how can they grow? We must protect them so that they have the opportunity to, to grow with time and contribute significantly to the economic growth of our uh, nation. Thank you. Certainly, we, it was really a, a beautiful decision. Now we'll take a short break. The conversation will continue shortly. This is NTA News 24, broadcasting from Abuja. You can watch us anywhere, anytime, on the following platforms. Start times, channel 101, Greek TV, channel 703, GSTV, channel 419, and Go TV, channel 46. For more information, log on to our website, www.nta.ng, or join us on our social media handles, Facebook at NTA News 24. For comments, suggestions and inquiries, send an email to news24 at nta.gov.ng or call us on the following numbers. NTA News 24, news and more news.
Thank you for staying with us. We're still continuing, continuing the conversation and our guests are still with us. Uh, Captain Musa Nuhu, Director General, Nigeria Civil Aviation Agency, NCAA, joining us via Zoom. And we also have uh, Belo Ahmed Alkali, Managing Director, Northeast Regional Shuttle. Now, uh, let me go back to Captain Musa. Making reference to the press release again, which says, and I quote, following the review and acceptance of the safety decision 2021 to, to 2022, issue 24, as released by the UAE, General Civil Aviation Authority, by the federal government. What are the provisions of this safety decision 2021-02? Okay, thank you. Uh, it's just a document released by the UAE government uh, uh, given the uh, protocols that must be complied with by passengers traveling to travel to UAE or transit to U, uh, UAE. Mm -hmm. So they just call it safety decision. That's how they name the document, stating the protocols, uh, COVID-19 protocols, what the passengers need to do. Uh, E.g., you need to have a uh, negative PCR test for eight hours before departure. And when you go to Dubai, uh, you'll have another test on arrival and so on and uh, so forth. So it's uh, that's what uh, the safety de uh, decision is. And that was the latest uh, protocol released by the UAE government, which the, uh, the government of Nigeria found uh, acceptable. Okay. And in compliance with what we have always asked for right from the start of the issues. Okay. Now, Bello Alkali, what professional advice do you have for both parties to ensure that issues like this are totally laid to rest? Um, I will still refer to the earlier statement of the fact that it's all about economics. I mean, uh, uh, we have bilateral air service agreement. Uh, we have entry points to Nigeria that we allocated to Emirates. There are entry points to Dubai allocated to the Nigerian career. Uh, if we follow the status quo, um, I mean, there won't be any problem again. Yes, there is COVID-19 restrictions and there are protocols to be observed. Each airport has its own protocol. Like the DG mentioned, this is their own protocol. If we follow the protocol, of course, there is nothing going to happen again. Uh, our passengers uh, will get to Dubai and come back home as smoothly as possible. There won't be any problem again. Okay. Now, Captain, Captain Musa, what are we expecting in the aviation arena in the coming days, especially as it concerns Nigeria UAE flights? Well, we hope the flight, uh, the traffic picks, uh, picks up and uh, we hope uh, APs when they start uh, and first match the smooth operations without any difficulty of hindrances and uh, get the hope they get all sort of cooperation with the EA authorities and parties like who've given Emirates all the cooperation, all the uh, uh, assistance we can to ensure that their operations uh, resume smoothly. And then we look forward to further strengthening the relationships, uh, flight relationships between the two countries. I hope in the near future we'll have other Nigerian airlines that can take up the excess capacity between uh, Nigeria and Emirates to the point that Nigerian Airlines to be having 21 weekly flights to UAE, like uh, Emirates has 21 weekly flights to Nigeria. So, hope to have some kind of a balance, uh, a balance of flights between the two countries uh, for the benefit of financial. As the doctor said, it's all about economics. It's all about economics. If one side is getting more passengers to the other side, then the other side, in this case, uh, Emirates over. APIs, capital flow, have net capital flow out of Nigeria, foreign exchange. And we all understand the difficulties uh, of getting foreign exchange in there. So the more air passengers Nigerian airlines get on this international route, the less uh, outflow of uh, foreign exchange from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And also, it makes it easier for the airlines to cover their expenses in uh, foreign exchange, such as maintenance, pilot screen, ETC, etc., mm -hmm. or that going to the central bank to demand on the 
very as as for the exchange we have in there. So it, it has it has a significant impact on the economy of the nation, and a lot of people uh, don't see it that way. We just have to protect our country and make sure we give uh, operators the opportunity to survive and grow to and become world renowned international addicts. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Bello, while the on pass lasted, how did Nigerians cope? I can tell you it has not been easy at all. Trust us, uh, Nigerians, we travel a lot. Mm -hmm. um, nobody will tell me um, the kind of uh, uh, economic activity that is going on in the airlines, like he mentioned. Uh, uh, sometimes you will see British Airways complaining that they don't even know how to repatriate their money. So if you talk about places like Dubai, it's an international market. I mean, come on. If you will allow Emirates, Emirates will come 30 times, not only in a day, but uh, not only as a bilateral agreement, but in a month. So, um, yeah. It seemed like they were at the losing end. They, of course, they were losing. Uh, of course, uh, there is no airline outside of this country that will be stopped from coming into Nigeria that will not cry the same day that they stop them. I mean, the passengers are extremely there in Nigeria. Uh, the market is mm -hmm. is there, and I mean, we we are the traveling public that we don't care, we don't follow uh, whatever the airlines will have to give us. All I need is to get to Dubai. However, I get to Dubai, so long as you will take me, I don't care. But um, like I said, uh, it was uh, really a tug of war for our businessmen and women that go to Dubai to buy items and come and sell. Uh, we ended up not having. Uh, such airlines, you probably have to go through Ethiopia, you have to go through Egypt, you have to go through other countries to get to Dubai, which was uh, extremely difficult. Mm. Uh, we, 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 we have to be grateful that this embassy has been uh, handled and it has been handled effectively by the government because, like the DG said, we have to try as much as possible to protect our own in the interest of the economic indices for the fact that, yes, okay, here we are, we are keeping the dollars home, they are having the money that they needed for their servicing, mm -hmm. for sending their aircraft for sea check, for buying mm -hmm. spare parts, they don't have to seek from the central bank. Okay. Okay, one final question, Captain Musa. What would be your final words to this topic, the issues on ground? Could you say that again? I said, what would be your final words to this issue? Well, I hope it's all over, and I hope uh, both uh, uh, countries, both nations, and uh, all nations that have bilateral services agreement uh, comply with the terms and conditions of the uh, bilateral services agreement to avoid this, as uh, Doctor said, does disruption of services, and a lot of passengers uh, uh, went through a lot of pain. But at the end of the day, it's for the benefit of the nation. What the government did was the benefit of Nigeria. There is no gain to that pain. And uh, the flights have resumed. And I hope, as I said earlier, uh, these services go stronger and stronger uh, as we go. And I uh, hope we, with other airlines we avoid getting uh, into this uh, not so pleasant uh, situation. Yes, definitely. It wasn't a pleasant situation, but at the end of the day, we're all happy mm -hmm. that everything has been resolved. Well, this is where we wrap it up on tonight's episode of the program. Our appreciation goes to you, Captain Musa Nuhu, Director General, Nigeria Civil Aviation Agency, NCAA. Thank you so much for joining us. And we also thank Belo Ahmed Alkali, Managing Director, Northeast Regional Shuttle. Thank you for sharing your thoughts and being a part of the program. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you. And we also appreciate you, our viewer, for always being there. Thank you. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. Don't forget, you can watch this and other episodes of Nigeria Today on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. Good evening. Have a wonderful day watching our programs. Goodbye.